What's up guys, my name is Tony, and today I'm going to give you a quick and painless guide on installing and customizing Linux Mint. At the end of this guide, you'll no longer be using Windows, and you'll be able to craft a fully customizable setup of Linux Mint on your own hardware. The first thing we need to do is head over to linuxmint.com and navigate to the download section to download the Linux Mint ISO. I'll be using the 22.1 Cinnamon Edition. Cinnamon is one of my favorite desktop environments, and I always recommend it to people, especially those who are coming over from Windows. There is technically a Linux Mint installation wiki, but we won't need that today since it's such a simple installation process. Today's guide is more about what to do after the install to make the system more usable and efficient. Once we load up our ISO from the USB, we'll hit enter at the scrub menu to start Linux Mint. And we'll go ahead and click this install Linux Mint icon. And we're going to try to breeze through this install process because it is a continue simulator, if you will, so that we can spend more time focusing on the customization of the build. So with that being said, we'll continue. And our keyboard is correct. Continue. And if you want your system to just work with media like YouTube videos, MP3s, etc., you're going to want to check this box. But if you're someone who prefers sticking strictly to free software principles, be aware that these codecs include proprietary elements that are not endorsed by the FSF. If you don't know what the FSF is, just check the box and click continue. And underneath advanced features, if you want to encrypt your drive to make it harder for the alphabet bros or other third parties to access your data if your computer is seized, check this LVM option and check this encryption box here and hit OK and click install now. So here's where we're going to choose a security key for our encryption. And for me, I'm going to use one, two, three, four. You need to use a much more secure password so that it's not prone to brute force attacks, which would render the encryption useless. We're not going to worry about a recovery key today and looks like we're ready to go. So let's let the installation rip. And this will look something similar to that LSBLK output that we get in our Gen 2 or Arch install. And that looks good here. So let's go ahead and continue. For my situation, I am in Los Angeles. So I'm going to click continue. For the name, I'm going to put Tony. And for the computer's name, I'm going to put Mint. BTW, because I'm on Linux Mint, by the way. And for the password, I'm going to do 123, which is different than the 1234, just so I can test to see if the encryption works. And looks like we're ready to go. And we can click this arrow here to see what's going on under the hood. As you can see, it's a very big terminal. All right, the installation is finished. That's beautiful. Let's go ahead and restart now. And we see we are prompted for our encrypted partitions password, which was 1234. And we're ready to log into our user with that other password of 123. And welcome to Linux Mint. So I guess step zero is uncheck this box here to hide this dialog on startup and close out of that. And the very first thing we need to do is ensure that all of our packages are up to date. So let's open a terminal by hitting Control Alt T and let's run sudo apt update sudo apt upgrade. And let's hit yes to confirm to install and update all these packages, which might take a while. So I will see you in a minute. And there are quite a bit of packages here because Linux Mint comes with a lot of stuff out of the box. So if you're more interested in a minimal type distribution, just check out my Arch Linux or my Gen 2 Linux installation guide. All right, now that that's good to go, we can clear that terminal. All right, so there's a couple of different ways we can skin this cat, but since we're gonna be installing a lot of stuff using GitHub links, let's start with Firefox. So let's close the terminal here and let's just open Firefox. And as we see here, we're immediately prompted with this corporate art and other bloatware. So let's get rid of that, among other things here, by using BetterFox's user.js. So, so let's just search for BetterFox user.js here. And let's click that first GitHub link. Firefox by default is really just spyware and bloated, but it has hundreds of settings that you would have to manually tweak to fix that. But luckily we can simply leverage the work that has already been done by BetterFox here by just dropping his user.js file into our config folder. So let's click this user.js file here and let's go ahead and download this and we'll open that folder. And we'll go back to Firefox here and we need to find our config directory here. So let's go to the URL bar and type about support. And as we see our config directory here is home, Tony, Mozilla, Firefox, and it's this kind of verbose string here, but luckily we can just click open directory and we can literally just drag this user JS file and drop it into this directory. All right, to confirm that work, let's close that, close that, close that, reopen Firefox, <laughs> and there we go. Better Fox, debloated, no more corporate art, and 31% faster. So let's do a couple more things here. Let's go to settings here and scroll down to appearance and set that dark theme. All right. And the last thing with Firefox we're gonna do is install an ad blocker here. So let's search for uBlock origin. Let's click that second link here. Click this link, click add to Firefox, click add, click okay. And for some reason they make you jump through a lot of hoops to add this add on here. And I think that's because, well, just like in my Ubuntu video, no further comments on this. All right, let's close Firefox for now. And let's open up a terminal again to install some programs. 
Well, we have our terminal open here. Let's right click this and click preferences and let's tinker with this a little bit. Let's change the default font to 16 and let's click on scrolling and let's hide that scroll bar. We're gonna still be able to scroll through our terminal but we don't need to see the actual scroll bar. And let's go back into colors here and let's uh, let's uncheck this box here and let's check that here and let's set this to around 10%. All right, that looks good. Let's close that for now. The beauty of Linux in general is that I don't actually need to go to a random website to install all my programs. I can just do it right here from the terminal using a simple command. So let's install NeoVim here just like that by typing sudo apt install NeoVim. Confirm that, clear the terminal. And let's see if that worked. And there we go, NeoVim version 9.5. Let's quit out of that with the colon Q. All right. Our terminal is running bash by default here, which is fine, but let's optimize that a little bit by running ZSH instead. ZSH is a shell scripting language that's mostly a drop-in replacement for bash, but adds a ton of quality of life improvements. Let's install that alongside with git by typing sudo apt install git ZSH. So we're going to install both these programs with one command. All right. To enable ZSH as our default shell, we're going to have to type chsh-s user bin zsh and that is short for chew shell so let's let that rip and let's log out and log back in to see if that worked all right that looks like that worked because we are prompted with this zsh message here and let's ignore all this for now and let's just type zero here because that's going to create a temporary zsh config file that we're going to tinker with later so we can clear the terminal now and to make our ZSH a little bit more riced, if you will, we're going to use a helper tool called OhMyZSH. So let's snap our terminal to the left here with super left, and let's go ahead and open another Firefox. Snap that to the right, and let's search OhMyZSH. And let's click this first link here. Let's click the install button. That will navigate us to this curl command. Now, generally, I don't think you should be running these random curl commands from the internet, because obviously you could be prone to some type of malicious software, but in this case, I do endorse this, I do know what this is, and copy this command and drop it into your terminal with Control shift v and just hit enter. All right, we can close Firefox here and full screen this, and we can clear the terminal. And look at that, it already looks a little bit better, so let's tweak this a little more here. We're gonna modify our zsh config file here by typing vim.zshrc, and let's navigate down to this line here where it says ZSH theme using the arrow keys or J. Just press FR to find the first instance of R here and press CW to change this word. And we're gonna change this to half hyphen life. And we'll hit escape and colon WQ to write and quit that file. And we need to source our ZSH file here by typing source.zshrc. And there we go. That looks a lot better here. It's got my name here and it's got what directory I'm in and it's got that Half-Life logo, which pretty much confirms that since that logo is in the third position of our prompt, that means Half-Life 3 is confirmed. All right, let's move on to the next steps here. And that's gonna be key bindings. So we've been opening our terminal with a key bind, but we've had to manually click Firefox a few times already and our file explorer as well, which just feels inefficient. Let's download a launcher program that is ubiquitous amongst Linux power users called Rofi by typing sudo apt install Rofi. Let's confirm that and clear this. And to show you guys what that does, we can just type Rofi dash show dRun. And as you can see here, it's just a launcher menu, so we can search for any program here, for example, Firefox, and we would just hit enter there, and that would launch a Firefox for us. So let's close that. And let's use Control C to quit that command. Let's press up and run that again. And let's search for theme, because Rofi has a built-in theme selector. Let's hit enter. And let's use the Grubbox Dark Hard. In fact, let's go with Grubbox for the whole system today. So hit Alt A here to confirm Grubbox as the theme. And, and that's great and everything, but we need to actually bind that to a hotkey, otherwise it's useless. So let's open up our keybind section here and hit that super key and search for keyboard and hit enter. And we'll go to shortcuts and let's click launchers. And for the terminal, that's control alt T as we see. Let's change that by double clicking that and hitting super enter. That is a common bind for the most dynamic tiling window managers. And the web browser, let's change that to super B for browser. And for the home folder, that's just going to open a file explorer at the home folder. Let's change that to super F for files. And let's add a custom shortcut for Rofi by clicking custom shortcuts, add custom shortcut. Let's name that Rofi. And the command is going to be Rofi dash show dRun. Let's add that and let's bind that to 
super D, and it's gonna tell us that it's currently in use by show desktop, which we definitely wanna overwrite that, so just hit yes. And there's one more key bind we wanna change, and that's gonna to be to close the window. So let's click on Windows here and click Close Window. And Alt F4, if you're used to that and you're fine with that from Windows, that's fine. But for me, F4 is just way too far away from Alt to be continuously pressed just to close programs. So let's change that to Super Q. I think that's going to wrap it up for Keybinds. So we can test that and close this with Super Q. And that worked. Super Q that, close that terminal. Now Rofi, we can open with Super D, perfect. So now that we have access to Rofi on Super D, we can really just open any program we want by hitting Super D and typing the name of the program. So in this case, let's test that with the calculator, for example. Let's search calc. And there it is. And yeah, we've got the calculator open here, so we can kind of just put some random numbers here and see kind of what happens. Looks like that's pretty good. I think that's fine. So yeah, it looks like that's working, so that's great. Quit that with super Q. So we've got our file explorer with super F, Firefox, and open a terminal, super enter. Man, we're looking pretty good here. This is starting to feel like a pretty good system. So let's move on with the customization. Let's quit all this with Super Q. Now that we have that Grubbox theme set on our Rofi menu, let's go ahead and apply the Grubbox theme to our entire system here. So let's open up Firefox here with Super B and let's snap that to the top and let's search Grubbox GTK theme. And let's go ahead and click this here. And I do want to download the dark borderless Mac buttons version. So let's download that. And we'll go ahead and open that here. Let's right click this and extract here. After we download those themes, we're gonna have to apply them by copying them to our .themes directory, but that .themes directory doesn't exist yet. So let's just delete this zip folder here because we don't need that anymore. And let's just close that, close that and open that terminal again. And let's make that themes directory here by typing mkdir.themes. So we're gonna type cp-r for recursive, capital D downloads. And we can just press tab here because it's the only thing in our downloads folder. And we want to copy all of the contents of that folder. So we'll do star. And we're going to copy that into dot themes. All right. Now we can use Rofi to search for themes. Open up that themes application. We'll click advanced settings here. And for applications, there we go. We see that Grubbox dark. So let's check that. And there you have it. Grubbox dark theme has instantly been applied to the themes. And looks like it's been applied to our terminal as well. Perfect. Let's check our desktop as well here. And we do see Grubbox is available here as well. So let's apply that. And yeah, this is starting to look like a pretty good system. All right, for the icons, we do have to download those. So let's get that process going. Super Q to quit that. And let's quit this terminal. Open up a browser with Super B. And look at that, Firefox looks even better now. Let's search Grubbox icons. We'll click that second link here to get us to that GNOME look.org site. And we'll click download. And we're gonna download that tar.gz file. Let's download that. We can show that in our folder here. And we can extract these here by right clicking and clicking extract here. Let's quit that and quit that. Open a terminal. And let's copy those themes into the appropriate directory here by typing cp-rv, capital D downloads, capital G grubbox, plus, and let's do star here to get both the light and the dark themes. And let's copy that to dot local slash share slash icons. And there we go. Clear that and quit that. Let's go ahead and use Rofi here to open that themes again. And here we go under icons, we can check that. And we do see we have Grubbox light and dark. So let's select the Grubbox dark icons here and there we go. Already looking a lot better. All right, let's quit this out and move on to the next step. And that's going to be setting a wallpaper here. So let's open up a browser and let's search Grubbox wallpapers. Let's do something minimalistic here. And let's use that. Why not? Looks pretty cool. We can quit that with Super Q. And yeah, our system's starting to look pretty good. If you're somebody who's not comfortable with a terminal text editor like Vim or Emacs and requires more of an IDE type setup, we can install a version of VS Code that has all the spyware removed from it, and that's called VS Codium. So let's open up Firefox here, Super B, and let's search VS Codium. And we'll go ahead and click this first link here, and let's go ahead and go down to this install. Let's scroll down here to the section where it says install on Debian slash Ubuntu dev package because Linux Mint is a Debian-based distribution. So similar to what we did with that oh my CSH script, we're gonna go ahead and open up a terminal here and snap that to the left. Go back to Firefox, snap that to the right, 
And let's copy this command to add the GPG key of the repository and paste that in here with Control Shift V and run that. All right, let's add the repository now with this command. And now that we've added the repository, we can just run sudo apt update sudo apt install codium. All right, let's quit the terminal with super Q. Let's quit Firefox, super Q. Mm, let's take a look at VS Codium here. Open up Rofi here with super D and type in Codium. Mm, let's hit enter. Mm, there we go. Looks just exactly like VS Code. So let's add the Grubbox theme here by clicking the extensions here and searching for Grubbox. So that first one here looks pretty good. So let's grab that. Mm, there we go. Now it's looking more like our system. So we can close that. And the cool thing about Codium is, from a terminal, let's say we want to open a specific file in Codium, just like VS Code, we can type Codium. And, and for example, let's open our ZSHRC, and there you go. It opens up our ZSHRC's file right in VS Code. So let's make an alias here by typing alias code equals Codium. And, and I almost instinctively just hit escape colon WQ, but we are in Codium here, so let's just hit control S to save that file. And I think it's control W to close the tab. Command Q to quit that. Instead of sourcing our ZSHRC file, we can just quit the terminal, open up another one, and that just reloads ZSHRC. And that's perfect. We can just type code.zshrc, and there you go. So we added the alias. And there you go. We have ZSH, Rofi, Keybinds, BetterFox, Grubbox themes, and VS Codium, and now our system feels very, very usable. If you follow my channel, you know there's one last step I have to do before ending the video, but we're going to go with an alternate tool here today, so let's open up Firefox here. Let's search for pfetch. Let's get that first GitHub link. We'll type git clone, paste that into pfetch. Clear that. CD into pfetch here. sudo make install. Alright, cd back to our home directory, vim zshrc, bottom of this file will shift g, hit o to enter a new line in insert mode, and we'll type in pfetch here, escape colon wq to write and quit that file, clear that, quit that, quit that, and we are ready to run our final pfetch here, and thank you guys for checking out this video, and it is finally time for me to run my obligatory pfetch.